In the future, it will not be so odd for people who are raising children to have part-time jobs, both of them, and that that will be seen as a normal thing to do. Um, so I, I'm very optimistic that change will come. Even if you're not planning to have um, a spouse and your own children, you're still part of a family. And one of the topics we have actually is elder care. How are you going to be dealing with your parents when they get older? And just about everybody has parents. So <laughs> family writ large. Um, your family of origin, your family, a nuclear family that you may start or have already started. How are you going to balance work and family in your, in your life? And um, balance may be the wrong word uh, because probably there is no balance. So how are you going to combine them? How are you going to have a satisfying family life and a satisfying career? Often somebody says, well, um, I'm, my mother's going to come and take care of the kids while I work. And I always think, okay, have you asked your mother? And often they have not. So I say, well, you know, the first step of your plan is to ask your mother. <laughs> and some of them come back the next session and say, oh, my mother says, no thanks. You know, I've been there, done that. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be taking care of your children. So it's a chance for people to be real. And also with regard to elder care. Generally, we have very generous people in the class who say that what they'll do when their parents or parent uh, needs care is they'll bring that parent into their house. And I say, well, do you know if that's what your mother or your father or your mother-in-law wants? Well, no, we haven't had that conversation. We'll have that conversation. And again, oftentime, oftentimes the parent does not want that. There are still women, including women who are about to get an MBA, who want to take time out, who don't want to come back to work. And often they're the ones who feel deviant because after all, they've got an MBA. And, you know, presumably they went for that degree because they want to work. But then they have a child and they want to take some time off. So the question of how you take time off, how much time you take, and most important, what you do while you're out. Namely, you better keep your networks up. And you better keep your hand in the business so you know what's going on. Because if you actually disappear totally for five years, or, or 10 years for sure, um, you're going to have a lot of trouble coming back. It's really a family decision. Because if she leaves the workforce, unless your family is independently wealthy, there's going to be a lot more pressure on you, the man. Um, and so you should know that. And you and she should talk about this. And how long is she going to be out for? And what's she going to do to keep her, her finger in it while she's out? And maybe the two of you want to have a different conversation, which is not, you know, when should she leave and how should she come back? But maybe you want to talk about what the two of you can do so that you can both stay in. Perhaps you're going to put more money into hiring a nanny or um, you're going to uh, make it worthwhile for your mother-in-law to play a bigger role here. Maybe your wife can work part-time. Maybe you can both work part-time. Anyway, we're trying to increase the number of options that people have and make it a family decision rather than the woman just saying, oh, this is what I want to do. You can't possibly plan everything out. You don't know if a child that you have will be a special needs child, in which case all of your planning is for naught because that child is going to take precedence. Your decisions are all going to be about how to help that child. And, you know, planning or, or there's a death of a spouse, um, in which case everything is different or even a divorce that you didn't see coming. So I think planning is a very good thing, 
but everybody should understand that, you know, what's the old saying? Man plans and God laughs. I mean, you just can't possibly plan out everything. What are you going to do in the place where you work? In a large corporation, in a small startup? What are you going to do personally to help other people to balance work and family? How are you going to change policies about family leave? What are you going to do about childcare for your employees and the people you manage? I remember one guy saying, um, you know, I told her when she comes back, she doesn't have to have her old job back. She can be um, in a much easier job with less travel. And in general, there's at least one woman student in the class who raised their hand and said, I don't want that. When I come back, I want to be just treated the way I was before. I want the travel. I want the promotions. And so men and women get to see that not everybody has the same view here. Some women want to come back and, you know, take a, a slower role for a while, and some don't. And the only way to know this is to actually have a face-to-face -face conversation <laughs> with the employee when she's ready to come back. You know, what, what is it that, that you see for yourself? And the other thing they learn is that what you say when you're pregnant and you've never had a child before may be different from what you say when you have had the child, particularly if the child has a problem of one sort or another. And so again, uh, people see that, and, and they learn from each other. They see um, what a wide variety of experiences people have. Mm -hmm.